So, welcome back to Pokemon Coliseum. Last time we defeated Venus and snagged Shadow Suicune, and now it's time to head down to, well, wherever it was she ran to. We're wasting no time in pursuing. Let's put Suicune at the front of the party just to get his heart gauge up a little bit. I have always loved Suicune. He's probably one of my favorite uh, second gen Pokemon. But anyway, I'm going to first go the way that. Okay, so uh, we see Venus here heading towards the elevator. But we're actually not able to use that elevator, so we have to go the other way, which is why I headed into the other door. Also, that green water does not look healthy at all. So, it's time to head down these stairs, and we're being stopped by trainers along the way. <laughs> yes, of course, there were other spies. What did you think? So, yeah, time to head down the under staircase. Another Teddy so We've seen one of those before. And a Gligar. The trainers on this stairway are kind of interesting. As you can see there, there's a bit of a net animation whenever a Pokemon stands out of a netball, which is pretty cool looking. But yes, we have a Shadow Pokemon here, and much to my sister's dismay, it's Gligar. Not that she wouldn't like Gligar, it's just that she loves Teddy Ursa. But yeah, we have a Shadow Gligar here. That's going to be a theme. We're going to be snagging a lot of Shadow Pokemon heading down these stairs. Every trainer we fight on these stairs has another Shadow Pokemon for us. So... This is going to be another episode with quite a lot of bios in it. Uh, of course, Gligar is going to be annoying. Not nearly as annoying as Justy's Gligar, you'll be seeing that later. Ugh. Yeah, Justy is, um, trust me, I'll be doing a major episode dedicated to Justy eventually and all the major failures that I have towards him. So anyway, I uh, guess another benefit of Suicune's amazing HP is that it's got more um, to stoke up the recoil from Shadow Rush. And a Jigglypuff. It's kind of a weird assortment of Pokemon. A bunch of normal types and Gligar, which is definitely not a normal type. I remember back in Generation 2, this was kind of... Ah, oh, stupid sand attack. Oh, well, I guess this is where a Pokemon with Keen Eye would actually see a use for that ability. Which, uh, Noctowl has that. A uh, Ladian, of all things, has that. Well, I guess this will help purify Suicune better. As you can see, Suicune's heart gauge has barely gone up. I also like how the animations actually sink the Jigglypuff's eyes there. That doesn't happen for most Pokémon. Because, yeah, Suicune has a massive heart gauge, being both a boss Shadow Pokémon and a Legendary. Uh, okay. Let's call you... Okay, that's at least a little bit of heart gauge got up from calling. Still love the way that Suicune roars. And let's bring in Jumpluff to put that thing to sleep. Thankfully, these snags are not going to be nearly as difficult as Suicune, so, well, I mean, I caught Suicune pretty easily, though. I do suspect, I haven't seen any evidence of this, but I suspect that they actually did make the legendaries in this game have a higher catch rate, because it took me way too quickly to catch Suicune and Entei than it really should have. The grammar there didn't really make sense, but I guess you understand. Ugh, you stupid, annoying Gligar spamming sand attack all the time. Ugh. Especially on my sleep powder user. It's actually pretty bad that Suicune has stuck with Shadow Rush for a while, because its physical attack, like I said, is the worst of all of its stats. And meanwhile, more fake tears. I'm surprised you can fake that much tears. You're gonna miss, aren't you? Yeah, of course you're gonna miss. Uh, but something I was going to say about Gligar is that back in second generation, it didn't learn Earthquake naturally, but it got Earthquake via an event in Stadium, which was pretty strange. I think it was an event in Stadium? It was some kind of event that gave it access to Earthquake when it normally wouldn't. <laughs> back in second gen, the only way to do a move relearner as well was to uh, go through Stadium. It was kind of a prize from winning everything. Of course, Coliseum doesn't have a move relearner at all, which is actually pretty irritating. Ugh, why sad as- ugh. Yeah, you're starting to get a sneak preview of why I hate fighting Justy so much. In fact, I'm gonna have to go and heal right after this fight. All because of that stupid sand attack. See, normally, when whenever I use sand attack myself, like in the early game, they always hit through it. Now I'm suddenly getting horrible flashbacks to Trails in the Sky SC, where on hard mode, enemies have a really annoying tendency to hit through blind most of the time. Normally, blind in that game makes physical attacks almost uh, impossible to hit with, but 
hard mode enemies have this uncanny ability to hit through it. Now, of course, this, uh, this side thing is not going to be super effective against Shroomish. And yet more weird Pokemon choices from this trainer. Just, it's weird. Just normal type, Shroomish, and then Gligar. Well, it's still going to do a lot of damage, though. Ah, uh, would you stop spamming Sand Attack, please? Now I suddenly thought of that uh, song in um, Sonic the Secret Rings, the first level song that goes, I got sand in my eyes, I can't. I'm not even going to try and sing it because it's kind of weird, quasi rap, and I'm pretty bad at that, but yeah. What do I decide to do? Yeah, I figured that Shadow Rush would probably carry the shroomish, so. Don't want to use Cyber on the Gligar, obviously never use any of Espeon's Psychic attacks against Shadow Pokemon, well, I mean, unless they're resistant to it. Especially not Psychic, because that would be bad, that would be really bad, if you had Psychic at this point. Well, that means more recall damage, and I'm kind of glad for more recall damage here, I'm normally not, but... Well, that'll do it, that'll definitely carry the Shroomish. This battle is taking way longer than it should, just because of that annoying sand attack. I should probably just start throwing balls now, really. Let's see what we got. Unfortunately, we don't have any balls that are particularly good at catching Gligar, so we're just going to have to go for a regular Great Ball. Uh, don't use Psybeam. As tempting as it is, please don't use Psybeam, because a crit would definitely seal this thing's doom. One. Nope. I forget where the Nox... Nox. When the next opportunity, I've merged the words there again, the next opportunity to snag this Gligar is. I'm guessing maybe post game, but I'm not fully sure. Once again, more damage to Espeon means more recoil, and that's kind of my main source of damage at this point. Oh, I really hope I catch this thing quickly, mainly because it's being annoying with Sand Attack. I'm going to need to go back and heal Ra after this, obviously. I'm using way too many of my lemonades probably shouldn't have done that, because my guess is now that I took the time to heal, I'm going to catch this thing immediately. Let's see. One, two, three... Nope! Okay! I was fully prepared to say Glycar get there, but I did not. I mean, I wouldn't really consider using this Glycar anyway, because it, I mean, there's no glitch score in this game, but with all this sand attack spammage, I probably would avoid using you out of principle, even if I was wanting to. Okay, can you cooperate this time? This is only the first Shadow Pokemon of many in this episode. One. Two. No! You are being incredibly annoying. I mean, I probably had more trouble with some other Shadow Pokemon than with this Gligar, but still, as far as sheer annoyance factor is gone... Okay, this is the point where I don't want you to be using Shadow Rush. I should probably just go for an Ultra Ball now. Do I go for the Ultra Ball? Please tell me I go for the Ultra Ball. <laughs> Part of me probably considered using a Tire Ball, but I don't think the battle's gone on that long. Uh, yeah, just go for Reflect. Okay, Ultra Ball, go! Please work! If a Great Ball gets three shakes, an Ultra Ball probably should do well. One, two, three... Gligar get! Gligar, get another member of the mediocre Gen 2 Pokémon that got much-needed evolutions in... You know what, let's just call them The Club from now on. And as you'd expect for a member of The Club, Gligar isn't that useful in this game. It has pretty decent stats, mainly leaning towards physical defense, but its stats are mediocre across the board elsewhere. Ground Flying is a pretty unique typing, and a very good one for the most part. Just watch out for ice moves. But Gligar's all-round mediocrity just kind of prevents that typing from being too useful. Both of its abilities are okay, but both pretty situational. And as far as moves go, Gligar's starting moveset is pretty terrible. When you've got Poison Sting on there, you know it's bad. And when Slash is the best you have, then yeah, that's even worse. You'll need to go to TMs if you want good moves on Gligar, and you can teach it things like Earthquake, 
Dig if you want to stall. Sludge Bomb, which is an unconventional option, but it being physical helps. And for level up moves, all you really have is Guillotine if you want to gamble. So overall, Glygar is alright, but it definitely suffers from not being able to evolve in this generation. And now I have to go back and heal, probably. Oh, that makes sense. Okay, so all these trainers here, they would have got their Shadow Pokemon because they all won Colosseum battles. <laughs> what? Yes, yes, that's okay. Yes, you cry. No, it's not okay to cry. And she cries anyway. That's... <laughs> that's very weird dialogue. I've forgotten about that completely. But anyway, I'm going back to heal now. Did you say anything new? Uh, well, sorry, but, um, she's kind of been uh, driven out of this place, which is definitely for the best. Okay, let us continue down the winding staircase, which almost became an endless staircase, thanks to that one trainer who made things feel like they were endless. But now it's time for our second opponent. Um, well, she kind of... Well, she stalled me for a long time. That's 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 a thing, at least. Let's see how long you end up stalling me for. Gloom and Curlia. It's kind of a lot of people have been using both those Pokemon in this game. Both of them were fully available in Ruby and Sapphire, though. Uh, Suicune's heart gauge is getting up a little bit, at least. Unfortunately, we'll be regaining Leah first. Joy, and then Gust. More Joy. Won't be until later that we get Surf, and then things get really amazing. But hey, at least Espeon can one-shot clues. But look at this, level 38, when Venus was level 45. That is kind of another weakness of this game, is the level balance is a little bit weird. Although, admittedly, I kind of understand the bosses having, um... Uh, such a good, um... Well, such good levels compared to everyone else. In fact, now I think about it, do you even have a Shadow Poke one? Because most non-boss trainers sent out their Shadow Pokemon first. Oh, there's Calm Mind. How I wish the team for that existed in this game. Sadly, it actually doesn't. Rule of thumb is that every TM that was exclusive to a gym leader in Ruby and Sapphire is not in this game. Why did I do that? Why didn't I side in Brasilia? I should have side in Brasilia. There was no risk of it potentially hitting a Shadow Pokemon switch in. Anyway, Curly is down. Stantler. Okay, that is something that we haven't seen before. Aha! You are, you weren't sending out your Shadow Pokemon first. We have a Shadow Stantler here. And has the Intimidate ability. So this is my first time seeing Stantler in the third generation, and seeing its ability be Intimidate was... kind of weird for me. Have we seen anyone use a Resilia before? Because I really like its animations in this game. Of course, back in this generation, Rosilia was a complete standalone Pokemon. I really like what they did with it in, um, in Gen uh, 6, in Gen 4, though. That was Magical Leaf, not, not, um, Razor Leaf, so it makes sense that it would do a bit more damage than I'd expect Razor Leaf to do. But yeah, I like what they did with it in Gen 4. They actually gave it both a pre-evolution and an evolution in the same generation. Of course, when Rosilia faints, it's like, I put my hands on my hips and then just faints. So it was the only Pokemon in this series, I think, to get both an evolution and a pre-evolution, and yet... Oh, that wasn't quite a one-shot. One Send up attack bonus coming off of a, um, 40... No, 95 base attack stats. So that's going to be doing quite a lot of damage to Espeon, but... Espeon was able to survive that. I probably should switch him out now, though. Or I could just try chucking a snag ball immediately. But yeah, it did work, because Rosilia definitely works as a mid-stage. Also, I actually really like the whole evolution line. I like Roserade. Roserade's actually one of my favourite grass types. Just because of, um... I guess I'll talk more after I give the 1, 2, 3 here. 1, 2, 3... Aww. Oh, I was about to say you were way more cooperative than Gligar, but sadly you had to jinx it there. And thankfully I was smart and switched out Soul. But like I was saying... Roserade is one of my favourite grass types, mainly just due to its great special attack, pretty good speed, access to a lot of great moves both offensively and support. Like, it can play a lot of decent roles. In fact, it can even do Sword Dance physical if you want to go that route. It's kind of a gimmick though, but it's at least not horrible at it. I used one back on my first ever Gen 4 competitive team. 
I used the old uh, Choice Scarf Sleep Powder combo, which worked pretty well in a lot of situations. One, two, three. Stantler Get! Okay, you did turn out to be less annoying than Gligar. So, that trainer was much easier. Stantler is a very weird Pokemon, and one you don't see all that often. In fact, it's a testament to how uncommon it is that I actually didn't know its base stats until I looked them up. And they're kind of interesting. While they aren't the best all round, they do lean towards mix sweeping, which oddly enough, Stantler actually has a pretty decent move pool for. You saw Furret earlier in the game having a fantastic special move pool, but not really that good of a special attack stat to use them, while well, Stantler at least has a serviceable special attack stat and some great special moves with which to use it, but it's also got a good physical attack stat and some pretty great physical moves too, like Earthquake and Shadow Ball. On top of that, Stantler also has a fairly decent support move pool too, getting Hypnosis, which makes it the third sleep inducer we have access to, joins a lot later than the other two, but if you aren't using Knockdown or Jump Off by now, Stantler can be an okay replacement. But it also gets Jewel Screens and by leveling up Calm Mind. Add in the Fantastic Intimidate ability, especially in doubles, and Stantler might not be that bad of an option in this game. I don't see why they felt the need to make its purification move astonish of all things, though. I find Stantler kind of the opposite of Entei. While Entei had fantastic stats but was let down by a terrible move pool, Stantler has an amazing move pool but is let down by very mediocre all-round stats. But there are far worse Pokémon you could be using, so if you want to go for something unconventional, I'd actually kind of recommend Stantler. Well, I mean, I do have a Legendary on my side. Nobody's really batting an island that I'm sending out uh, not only a Legendary Shadow Pokémon, but also, hi there, Missy Jr. blocking me, but also, there's also a little area in here, but also the fact that it's used to belong to Venus. So in this little nook we have two Tire Balls, that would have been great earlier against Suicune, although they probably wouldn't have reached full power in that fight. And we have here two Max Potions. Probably want to save those for later. At this point, Hyper Potions far outclass them, because nothing we have is going to have over 200 HP for a very long time. That's part of why I'm glad they nerfed Hyper Potions in Sun and Moon, because Max Potions were kind of useless uh, before. And here I think I just decide to use some healing items rather than go back to heal at the, um... Well, I actually call it a Pokemon Center, but it's really not. I wonder if these are the Super Potions that I still had from the very beginning of the game. I think some of them are, at least. But anyway, we have another trainer down here. Let's see who I lead with. Guess I should go for Luna here, because Luna needs to level up. And it's a female bodybuilder this time. So, Lonia. Sounds kind of like Lon Lon Ranch. Dunsparce and Octillery. Well, we have a Shadow Dunsparce and we have a Shadow Remorade, so we know that neither of these can be Shadow Pokemon, but, uh, hey, there's Octillery. I mean, I know that the Remorade Octillery evolution is supposed to be a gun evolving into an artillery cannon, but... Or a tank in Japanese, because Octillery is called Octank in Japanese. Uh, which is also leads into something interesting. Its signature move, Octazuka, is kind of even more of a signature move in Japanese, because its Japanese name is literally Octank Cannon, or Octillery Cannon. So, this makes it weird because Horsey has for a very long time been able to learn it by breeding. In fact, I think it's always been able to learn it by breeding. So, I mean, in... Oh, and here, here it is. Here's the Octillery Cannon. Which is unfortunately the best water move that it has access to in this game if you were to train up Remoraid, because it never gets Surf. But anyway, yeah, in Japanese it doesn't really make much sense that other Pokémon can learn it, because the attack is actually named after Octillery itself. Well, we're slowly approaching getting Leer. Yay. And switching out Luna for some reason. Wait a minute, why did I do that? I'm ignore I can ignore that accuracy drop because I have Faint Attack. Oh, great, Glare. Glare is always frustrating. Okay, at least that missed. And yeah, so that's... Octillery kind of suffers in the stab department in this game, because it has a non-perfect accuracy move, is the best thing that it has. Either that or Bowl Beam. 
Remoraid will learn Octazooka immediately on evolving, so you always have an Ice Beam. Yeah, Dunsparce is just another one of those normal- Oh, okay then. Though it really says something about how weak Dunsparce is that it couldn't KO eat him with a double super effective attack. That move is unlikely to be pretty useful. I think Octillery did get Sniper in late- Did it get Sniper in later generations? I'm not sure. I know that Kingdra did. But I think I actually have to switch Jump Off Art now. I think I sent her in because I wanted to Giga Drain, but at this point, I should probably just get out. Or am I just going to use Hyper Potion because, yeah. Why am I leaving you out against something with Ice Beam? I really have no idea. I'm dumb that way. Unless this person is dumb and doesn't attack. Okay, you did attack Jump Off. Doesn't look like that's a damage range. Please don't double target Jump Off. You double target a jump off, of course you would. That's on me though, I should have switched out jump off anyway. I just completely wasted a hyper potion. I don't know what I was thinking. Because there's no way that Suicune would have carried Dunsparce that turn. No way at all. Now I must avenge jump off! Kick face shall kick that ice beaming Dunsparce in the face. Yeah, Dunsparce is another one of those normal types that has a bizarrely large move pool, but. Can't really make use of most of it effectively. Octillery, on the other hand, has a really large move pool and actually can make use of a lot of it effectively. <laughs> Octillery is a pretty fun Pokemon. It is very slow, so it got a lot better once Trick Room became a thing. It's also decent on Baton Pass chains. Because of Suction Cups means it can't be raw or whirlwinded out. It still is vulnerable to Haze, though. Cradilly would also be used for Baton Pass Chain sometimes for similar reasons, but I think Cradilly is... Well, I don't think I know Cradilly is a lot bulkier. Please don't lower accuracy, that'd be a terrible thing again. Okay, good, yeah, because that would mean High Jump Kick has increased chance of backfiring, which is not good. So, I've only knocked out one of her Pokemon so far. This is looking kind of not that good, and Kick Face's High Jump Kick is double not very effective against Masquerade. Wow, that really didn't do much at all. Well, I mean, I suppose the Intimidate did something. Okay, you know, I just thought of something. Stat drops, are they applied before or after pure power? Because if you're applying the Intimidate drop to... Okay, well, first I need to talk about something. There's a Pile of Swine here, we've never seen that before, so that means... Yep, it's a Shadow Pokemon. But anyway, because if, if it applied to the raw attack stat before pure power was calculated, that'd mean that my attack stat is now considerably lower than it should be. Yeah, I should probably switch kick face out. You know what? Let's send... Please tell me I send in Dan Green. Yes, let us send in Dan Green! And fire blast that pesky masquerade in the face. Because thankfully, it's no longer a water type. Oh, hey, we have the two legendary beasts fighting alongside each other. I always like this combo. Even though, admittedly, Raikou and Suicune is a better team up because they both benefit from Rain Dance, whereas these two are constantly fighting against each other with their weather. Yeah, both of their weathers pretty much work against them. Oh, I don't think I was going to attack you anyway, so that's fine. Speaking of which, they're. I remember they released, when they were doing the Pokemon Legend trading cards, which I really wish I had those, they look amazing, but when they were doing the Pokemon Legend, they eventually released, I think it was like the second Legend set, they had um, combinations of all the Legendary Beasts together. So they had like Suicune and Entei, Suicune and Raikou, and Raikou and Entei Legend. And I forget which one of them I felt had the best art. I think the one that I liked the best in terms of art was either the worst card overall or the worst combination of them overall. But they had some pretty cool artwork. Just segue into that from, well, from talking about um, Suicune and um, Entei fighting together. Dan Green just took a surprising amount of damage there from Dig. I mean, it is the same type of attack bonus coming off of a... Um, uh, Pillow Swine or Pile of Swine, or I, I used to say Pillow Swine, but it's probably Pile of Swine. It actually had... I think I'm gonna show something silly here. <laughs> I'm gonna show something very silly. But yeah, I think it's got a base 100 attack stat, so that combined with Dig, which is only 60 power in this gen, but hitting for a weakness, still quite a lot of damage. So yeah, I can throw my balls at Pokemon while they're underground! I can just imagine the Pokeball going all the way into the hole and, like, actually finding anything there, which is pretty amusing. One. 
Nope. I mainly wanted to show that just for the silliness factor, because, yeah, it breaks free and then it goes back underground. It's actually pretty great. I love that. I forgot that I did that, but I think past me definitely was looking forward to uploading this video because of showing that, which is pretty funny. I mean, it makes sense for you to be able to throw a Pokeball at a Pokeball that's flying, but one that's dug under the ground is a bit more of a stretch. But I guess it would have been a lot of work to specifically program Pokemon being immune to Pokeballs while they're under the ground. I forget if Giratina knows Shadow Force or not when you first fight it, but can you throw Pokeballs at Giratina while it's under the effect of Shadow Force? Because it's supposed to have vanished from the dimension entirely while that's happening. But I guess Pokeballs technology has always been illogical anyway. I wonder what Secret Power's hidden effect is in this area. I know that in the under, I think it's the same as Pirate Town. One, two, three. No, almost caught you while you were underground, but uh, unfortunately that hilarity will not work. And yeah, Faint Attack still doesn't work while they're underground. That's one of the few times you'll actually see Faint Attack miss. And there goes Luna. I'm definitely going to need to go back and heal after this fight. One thing that I like about Palace Wine's animations in this game is that sometimes you can see its eyes, mainly in its fainting animation, which hopefully we don't see here. But it's kind of like Snorlax and then it has these tiny little dot eyes that are almost always covered up or hidden. Don't use High Jump Kick, that'd be a terrible idea. That would definitely want to carry this thing. That did barely anything though. Of course, Pilot's Wine sadly does not evolve in this generation, even though it actually could, because its evolution condition is leveling up while knowing Ancient Power. It can learn Ancient Power, I think, by breeding this gen, but it definitely can learn it, so... Both it and Lickitung had the honour of being Pokémon that, by all rights, could have evolved in earlier generations, but... Why am I using a Timer Ball? I don't know. Past me works in mysterious ways, I guess. Don't think I really needed to do that, but I guess I was making sure that you didn't faint to dig. Yeah, dig actually did get a buff to 80 power in, I think, either Gen 4 or 5. 1, 2, 3, no! A lot of these Shadow Pokemon, apart from Stantler, are being really annoying here. Okay, good thing I healed. That actually hurts quite a lot. I'm surprised this Pilot Swine hasn't used Blizzard yet, because it does have Blizzard. I still don't know exactly why I'm using Tire Balls. I probably would be better off using Ultra Balls, but oh well. Maybe they're times three by now? I'm not sure. One. Nope. Because there's no easy way to see how many turns have passed, at least in this generation. And you're D again. Well, that'll get you a first bar of Heart Gauge on uh, Suicune, I mean, and let's just go for a, uh, for some reason I didn't consider this thing worth using an Ultra Ball on. Okay, can we catch you this time? I would have loved to have caught you while underground, but one, two, three, Power Swine gets! Yay, it's another member of the club! So, Pilot Swine has a fantastic offensive type combination, but a pretty terrible defensive one. And that's not so good when you're this slow. And remember, Ice Shard doesn't exist in this generation. So, Pilot Swine has no way to make up for its low speed. It sort of tries to be a physically bulky physical attacker, much like Sudowoodo earlier, but its typing just doesn't really lend itself well to being defensive. It also suffers from the fact there aren't any physical ice moves in this gen. And you want to know something else it suffers from? For some reason, Parlor Swine doesn't learn Earthquake by level up in this gen either. It feels like in most generations it does, but not here. So if you want Earthquake on it, which you probably do because not only is it Stab, it also comes with the Soft Sand to boost the power of ground moves, you'll need to use the TM. 
And really, Palaswine doesn't have that many other good moves that it gets. I think the best thing about this Shadow Palaswine that you snag is that it starts off with Blizzard. I mean, it won't be doing much coming off of a base 60 special attack stat, but it is a pretty powerful move, and in dull battles you're likely to hit at least one of your opponents since it is a multi-targeting move. But overall, Palaswine is yet another member of the club that wouldn't be salvaged until Generation 4. And now, once again, I need to go back and heal. That actually wasn't that easy. Well, I mean, you know, hopefully Lady Venus is going to be going to jail soon, and then, uh, no one will really be able to show their face in front of her. Do I keep going? Oh yeah, because the last trainer isn't until right at the subway entrance, and yeah, that green water is definitely not healthy. I dread to think what it's like living in the under and probably having to drink that stuff. There is an item down there, though, and as you can see, there's a trainer right there, and, uh... Okay, this is weird. I'm pretty sure that that lift does work, but I think I was just going about trying to go in it the wrong way. Okay, we're back here. Time to fight this one last trainer. Well, we'll see about that. Ryder Nellis. More weird names. Sneasel and Loudred. I don't think we've actually seen a Sneasel before. Although I could be wrong. And yes, that Sneasel is indeed a Shadow Pokémon. Yeah, it was obviously going to be the Sneasel, given that it's a Johto Pokémon. Loudred's kind of a weird Pokémon in an x -Cloud. They kind of seem to be mixed attacking normal types that are also kind of slow. Boom Burst made them a lot better, though. But anyway... So Sneasel is mostly physical, and it is very, very fragile, especially on the physical side, so be very, very careful with how you attack Sneasel, because it's pretty easy to knock it out. And it's also going to be hitting fairly hard with Shadow Rush, also Loud Transfading Animation is pretty great the way that it jumps up in the air like that. Surviper. Uh, this would be kind of interesting as a Shadow Pokemon too. Hey look, it's the evolution of Arbok! According to four kids, uh, yeah. One one series that I actually considered doing on YouTube at one point was actually doing an everything wrong with all the trainers choice segments. They got better later on from what I saw, but it looks pretty hilarious. Some of the earlier ones, especially the which of these Pokemon would be would be best to battle this Pokemon trainers choice, because a lot of them were flat out wrong. Anyway though, Sneasel is, well, uh, it's a Pokémon that liked things much better after the physical special split, let's just say. Oh, kind of annoyed that you didn't paralyze me, because then you would have ended up paralyzed. And yes, we've regained Leah, yay! Well, at least it kind of synergized with Shadow Rush a little bit. Speaking of Shadow Rush... Well, nice survival there, but if Surviper decides to go for a double target, it's not going to last. Let's see what ends up happening. Survivor's stats, I think, all around were really all that good. I remember back in the day, I mostly trained one up just because of Poison Fang and Poison Tail, which, at the time, I think were exclusive to Survivor. At least Poison Tail was. Poison Fang, as is a rare case of... Uh, you're probably going to be talking to Umbreon, aren't you? Yeah, I'm so sorry, Luna. But yeah, it's a rare case of an attacking move that has a chance of inflicting Toxic Poison. Poison Tail also is a move with two secondary effects. It's got both a high critical hit rate and can poison. Only normal poison, though. I think there are some other Pokémon that can learn Poison Tail now, but back in Gen 3, I think it was Survivor's signature move. I think some other Pokémon might have been able to learn Poison Fang then. I also really like how Sneasel uses Screech. Anyway, let's put this thing to sleep just so that we don't have any repeats of uh, the other Shadow Pokémon that have been annoying to snag in this part. Hopefully Sneasel shouldn't take too long. It is very, very fragile, like I said, so I don't want this battle to really be taking too long. I remember Team Plasma in Gen 5 used to survive this quite often. 
you use nothing but body slam, haven't you? And that hit way harder than I was expecting. You're gonna paralyze. Of course you are. Like I said, sometimes you can just tell. You get this sense sometimes when bad luck is gonna happen. All right. Okay, I'm kind of screwed here, so I should probably either heal. No, I'm not gonna be using a TM in the middle of battle. I don't even know why you have access to your TMs list in the middle of a battle. So I don't know why I'm going for a regular Pokeball against Sneasel, but I guess it might work. One. Two. Nope. Thought it was gonna go for a two there, but it didn't. Oh, at least Sneasel is still asleep. Obviously, you don't want to be Shadow Rushing it. But Survivor is down now. Hopefully, that's Survivor down, right? Yes, it is. Obligatory mention of the fact that despite being mortal enemies, Zangus and Survivor can in fact breed. Don't know if we've seen a Corsola before, and oh, I really want to use Giga Drain on it, but I don't know if I'll get the chance. If I use a Paralyze Heal, yeah, that's exactly the idea that past me had. Use a Paralyze Heal, I'm now fast enough to be able to Giga Drain the Corsola and regain a ton of health. Oh no, you're using... Okay, you're, f you're faster than Jump Loft, that's impressive. Though you are several levels higher. Still, though, that's annoying. My cunning plan failed. I would have regained a lot of health if I'd hit that Corsola with Giga Drain because it's double weak to it. Corsola is another Pokemon that's just kind of... Eh, probably needs an evolution or maybe even a Mega. It's just kind of weak all round. Okay, so obviously I really don't want to use High Jump Kick against Sneasel. Uh, let's just see if my Shadow Rush ends up, um... That did quite a lot of damage. I hope I don't care with Suicune Shadow Rush. And thankfully I didn't use with that. And one shot. Yeah, most things weak to High Jump Kick from Metacham will get one-shotted. Of course, all those fainting animation is also kind of weird. It just sort of sp starts spinning in place like that. Okay, that's, that's not bad. If that had crit, it would have been bad, though. Okay, now I definitely need to start throwing maybe a stronger Pokeball, seeing as I don't have my Sleep user around anymore. I'm gonna have to go back and heal again. I mean, that wasn't entirely my fault. I didn't really anticipate that thing being faster than Jump Off. I mean, can you blame me? Jump Off is really, really fast. Okay, let's see. One. Two, three, Sneasel gets. Oh boy, it's Sneasel. Not only is Sneasel a member of the club, it is also probably the Pokemon that hated how Gen 3 worked out physical and special moves the most out of anyone. And that's really saying something. So Sneasel is a dark and ice type, but its stats are completely physical inclined. Both of its types were special in this gym. I think you see where this is going. To its credit, looking up Sneasel's moves, it's actually not as awful as I thought it would be. It does get moves like Brick Break, Shadow Ball, Focus Punch, Iron Tail I guess. So it's not a horrible physical attacker, but it would really appreciate physical Dark and Ice moves, of which there are none in this game. Speaking of this game though, one unique thing Sneasel has going for it, the move Icy Wind on its starting moveset. I've talked earlier about just how useful this move is in dull battles. Not only do you damage both opponents, you also lower both their speed. So Sneasel may be kind of worth using just for this move. And speaking of unique things, Sneasel is one of the only Pokemon to learn Beat Up in this generation, which has a very weird way of calculating damage in Gen 3 that I won't explain because that would make this video take hours. But Sneasel doesn't even learn that until level 57. So, out of all the members of the club in this game, Sneasel is actually one of the better ones, but it still really wishes things were Gen 4 and not Gen 3. Don't worry, Sneasel. One day you will be a beautiful Weavile, and then everything will be better. And that is all the Shadow Pokemon that we'll be dealing with in this area, so that's a relief. But we now have many... <laughs> that's kind of a funny one. There are now many more Pokemon for us to purify and grinding, which is why I think I end up doing right after this. Far away by train, huh? Well, we just happen to be right next to a train station, so, um... 
past me. You really gotta go back to heal now. Really? Spoilers, there are actually no fights through the station doors. So there's not really much reason for me to go back and heal. Oh look, it's the horrible boy! Shoot. PG, Venus, PG. People who are on Maryland streams will get that. I still laugh whenever I see the phrase TCH in any Pokemon game. Well, in any game in general now. Which shows up quite often. Anyway, let's see what this item contains. One black glasses. Kind of weird for someone to have left some black glasses down here. That's an okay item for Umbreon, but uh, Umbreon is not exactly the best at attacking. You'd rather use a defensive item. Yeah, that looked, out of the corner of my eye, that looked like an item chest, but it is not. So, we've got a train to catch. Let's go. Venus fled inside this train. There's nowhere else on the platform to go, so let's get in there. Mr. Junior likes to be really in the way in this area, especially. Ah, we have an inventory list being brought up, which means we're probably going to get an item that operates the train. Uh, that's actually pretty sad to look at. That's probably how the Shadow Pokemon were being distributed from Iron's lab into the Under and through the Under into Pyrite Town. Ha, huh, where'd they go? They led us in a full circle, didn't they? Oh no! She got away with the only key to this train! There's no way we can go on now! Or at least, that would be the case, if Venus wasn't a complete moron, and dropped the key right here. Don't you just love evil teams in Pokemon games and their extreme amounts of stupidity? So, yeah. We won't be boarding the Shadow Liner just yet, we'll just be going back and saving, because that was quite a few battles and a lot of bios to get through, so in the next part, we'll be entering the Shadow... Well, don't really want to spoil what's on the other side of the Shadow Liner, but it should be pretty obvious when uh, Venus talked about linking up with Iron. Yeah, we're coming after him next. We now have a direct route to his door. Thanks to Venus being an idiot and dropping the key. Once again, evil teams in Pokemon games, even ones as dark as this one, still can't es escape being complete idiots. Now, I also think that the Under Coliseum is accepting challenges right now. I would highly recommend not doing it at this point in the game, though, because their levels are, I think, in the mid to late 50s, and they have fully evolved Pokemon too, so definitely the hardest of the optional Coliseums. So anyway, next time we'll be taking a train.